Well, we're into our third section in 1 Peter. So far we've seen that we are chosen, we're a chosen people. Last week we looked at the fact that we are a hopeful people. And today we're going to see that we are to be holy. We are holy. As always, if you haven't already done so, take some time just to read through the passage that we're looking at together. Uh, familiarize yourself with it. Spend some time praying and asking God to open your eyes to see and understand wonderful things about Him. And try and notice some of the, the big ideas or the repetition that you see in this passage. And I'm going to highlight, as always, just some of what I've noticed in this passage to hopefully help you as you teach it to others. Just as we start to show why I said, or I called the section, we are holy, in verse 15, Peter says, just as he who called you is holy, so speaking of our Father in heaven who is holy, says, so be holy. And then he gives us this quote, for as it is written, be holy because I am holy. And this is a quote from uh, Leviticus 11, where the Lord God says, I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God, therefore be holy because I am holy. And just as that passage reminds us, God had saved his people out of, out of Egypt. God had done the work of making them his people. And as a response to that, God calls them to be holy. He doesn't call us to be holy in order for us to be accepted by him. He first chooses us, as we saw in the first section in 1 Peter. And then, as we'll see here, we are his redeemed people by the blood of Christ. And because of what he's done, he calls us to be holy. So this idea is key in this section. Um, now that you've purified, it's the same uh, word, same type of word. Peter is calling us to be a holy people in this section. Um, Linked with that, uh, he calls us to be obedient children, obeying the truth. And all of this is linked back with the hope that we saw in our last section. Because we have this hope of what God has done in the past um, through our Lord Jesus and what he's secured for us in the future, this a living hope, the eternal inheritance, the salvation that will be completed, because of that hope, he calls us to live as obedient children, holy lives, because we have purified ourselves by obeying the truth. And when we go through a passage like this, particularly in um, New Testament letters, there are linking words that often just help us with the flow of the argument and the therefore, whenever you see a therefore, you need to ask, what is the therefore, therefore? And the therefore is linking us back with what we've seen. So as I already said, because we have hope, therefore, with minds that are alert. And that, uh, another, another translation says, prepare your minds for action. So with minds that are alert, set your hope on the grace and then live as holy people. So the, looking out for words like that, therefore, um, here in verse 18, 4, verse 22, now that, so that, for, for, and therefore. Those kind of linking words can just help us with uh, understanding the structure of a passage. So here, this just helps us see in uh, the first few verses uh, how we have this hope-fueled holiness. The next few verses we see um, how we have a precious redemption. The next few verses show how we are motivated to be loving. So our hope-fueled holiness flows out of the precious redemption that we have been shown. And then as a result of that, our hope-fueled holiness is shown in a gospel-motivated love. And all of this is fueled in the last few verses here. It's fueled by a craving for God's word. 
that's what we see in this bigger section. We have this hope-fueled holiness, which flows from our precious redemption. It is shown in gospel-motivated love. So love is the, the evidence of holy living, and all of this is fueled by a craving for God's word. So this is a sincere love for one another is one of the keys that we see in this section. Sincere love. Love one another deeply from the heart. So that is the key evidence that should be seen in us as God's hopeful people. So the key linking the first two sections together is just looking at um, our Lord Jesus. So Set your hope fully on the grace to be brought when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. And we, we see in the next section that he was revealed in these last times. So that's the days we're living in for your sake. So Jesus was revealed for us. And he was revealed um, so that we could see that the precious blood of Christ was shed to redeem us. And it is what Jesus has done for us, this precious redemption that is ours, that causes us to want to live these hope-fueled lives, uh, this hope-fueled holiness. See, we won't want to, we won't have any desire to live holy lives if we aren't absolutely amazed at what Jesus has done for us, this incredible redemption through the blood of Jesus that has been revealed for our sake. Jesus has done everything necessary to save us. And as we increasingly grasp the love that he has shown us, this love then stirs our hearts. God puts that love in our hearts. And it's seen not only in a love for him, but in a one another love, a sincere love, a deep love from our hearts. So as Jesus said, it's by our love for one another that the world will know that we are God's disciples, Jesus' disciples. And so we should be a people whose holy lives are characterized by a one another love. And how, does, how do these verses fit? Well, we see twice here, we've got this not with perishable things, such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, the imperishable. And here again, we see not with perishable seed, but of imperishable so something imperishable has caused us to be born again and that is the living and enduring word of god and um, this is the greek word logos he used a different word here uh, pneuma for word but it is this word the the good news of the gospel that was preached to you the the logos of god which as john 1 speaks about jesus being the word of god so this is the gospel word the word about our salvation, about our redemption. And it's that word that was preached to you. And it, that is what Peter links here in 2 verse 2. It is that word that we are to crave. As, as a newborn baby craves milk, they know, a baby knows that milk from his mother is not a fringe benefit. They need that in order to live. So we ought to crave this pure spiritual milk, the word of God, because we know that we need it in order to live. If we don't get it, we will die. It's a craving. We know we need it. So that by it, you may grow up in your salvation, linking back to what we saw about this salvation that we are looking forward to, the salvation that has been secured for us because of Jesus, the salvation that the prophets were longing to see and the angels look at in awe, this is the salvation that is ours and we want to grow up into that salvation. And we grow up into that salvation as we crave this pure spiritual milk, this word that was preached to us. We want more of it because in it we have tasted that the Lord is good. As we read God's word, we taste and we see if you think about uh, Psalm 34, verse 8, 
where the psalmist says, taste and see that the Lord is good. We have tasted this. We've seen God's goodness in the gospel, in our redemption. This gospel word that was preached to us. This word that gives us hope because it's all about what Jesus has done for us. As all of those things happen, those things should fuel us to live holy lives. As we crave God's word, as we live these holy lives, the evidence of that will be seen in us loving one another deeply from the heart. Peter is throwing so many big ideas together here, but all of this so that we will be a distinct people, that we will show what it means to be a chosen people, a hopeful people. It will be seen in us living holy lives, lives that are characterized by a one another deep love from the heart. And Peter is going to expand on this in the next few sections, showing what it means for us to really be um, a people living distinctly in this world for God's glory. Because that's what we ultimately want to see. We want, to, we want people to end up praising God because of the way they see us live. We want them to taste the goodness of God in his word. And then as they taste that, that they will become obedient children to him, living holy lives that are characterized by love, all because of what Jesus has done, the precious blood that was shed. And as you teach this to others, it should cause us to evaluate our own lives. Where are we not living holy lives? Uh, what areas of our lives are we still conforming to our evil desires? Peter says, do not conform any longer to that. So don't conform, be transformed as our minds are prepared for action. This is one more tool that's just worth looking at. Um, there are lots of verbs, so words with action in this section. And in letters like this, it's worth looking out for the imperatives. So the words that are commands here imperatives and this is an imperative here and there are a few other imperatives so live out your time here is an imperative love one another is an imperative and crave is an imperative these are commands that Peter is giving set your hope fully with this uh, mind that is prepared for action set your hope fully on this grace live your time here as foreigners in fear of God not in fear of people we we want to have a, a fear not that paralyzes us but that motivates us to live for God with this command to love one another as we crave this pure spiritual milk all of these things will help us to live these holy lives for God. Well, God bless as you dig in further and as you teach this to others. I pray that this will motivate and challenge all of us to be a people who live holy lives because of what Jesus has done for us. God bless.